Hey YouTube, this is a quick and dirty tutorial of how I made a quick and dirty custom sonic screwdriver. It's actually made out of the guts of the David Tennant toy. This one I customized to give the kind of crackle paint effect by just rubbing it with black paint and rubbing it clean so that it only filled the cracks. And I also changed the top to a blue LED as opposed to the UV that came with it. Some people have shown me how you can do the actual slide button so that it'll travel. I haven't done that yet, so I can still only use it in the two positions. But I did remove the black plastic on the inside so that you can see the actual wires, which is a lot more true to the show. I had two of these, so I gutted one to make my custom sonic screwdriver. Now I've actually taken out the electronics for the purposes of this tutorial just so I can show you the individual pieces but normally the button protrudes through the hole right there it's actually an extended button so that it'll you know actually stick out a little bit the button that comes with it is very small you can get a longer button at Radio Shack which is also where I got the 12 volt LED cover obviously it's not a 12 volt LED that I use because it's only a 5, 6 volt system so you need to find an LED that works on you know, 4 or 5 volts. Like I said, you can find those at any Radio Shack. Everything else is just plumbing or hobby supplies that I found at a local hobby shop and my local hardware store. This is actually like an end cap. This is a brass nipple. And then the top here is a reducer and a flare nut at the very top. The button itself is fabricated out of brass plate that I got at a hobby store, as well as the internal slide components are just brass pipes that I also got at the same hobby store. So, let me take it apart and show you how I built it. Everything is just pressure fit together. So this nut here just has a brass sleeve that I glued. You can kind of see the rough epoxy job on the inside. And it's the perfect size so that it just kind of slides and then pushes in. Give it a little twist and it locks right there. The top is the same exact thing. It's just got a groove cut into it so that the slide will pass through. Now here at the top you can see I tried putting a small screw from the inside out just to hold it a little better because, you know, me being rough with it, I would pop the glue and send the button flying, and have to pick it off the floor and glue it back on. But you're welcome to try anything you want. It's just I decided the screw would be better even though you can kind of see it, you know, but oh well. And then here you can see the internal sleeve that fits into the body that has the groove cut out of it. And I just used a Dremel cutoff wheel to cut that out. It's glued into this reducer nut so that it travels with it. And there you have the internal components. I have another piece that I put over the battery compartment for the toy. And then the toy has a speaker and LED that runs off the top and you just kind of slide it in and line up your buttons. like so. And there's your internal slide. So let me take this apart so I can show you the individual pieces. The inside here is a half inch and I think this is 19 30 seconds. I have another little stub piece in there because I had to make a collar so that I could kind of glue everything together. Again, I'm a big fan of epoxy. Everything I do is usually glued together. There is a half inch to half inch coupler that I cut one side in half to kind of make an arrest for the LED and it slides in and you can kind of pull the lens cap off here if I can excuse me there's another little half inch brass sleeve that I can glue the flare nut to and this is just how you buy it slide the two together There's your pass and your rest for your LED. And I cut off the very top of that 12 volt green LED cover 
so that I could just kind of pressure fit it in. It fits in a half inch tube fairly well. And then a little bit of a crazy glue or epoxy and it'll be a pain to get that back out. Trust me, I did it this morning. Now, I wanted to use a clear tube. I couldn't find anybody locally that sold acrylic tubing. I checked like little test tubes, specimen tubes, and everything was too flimsy to kind of use for it. You can order an acrylic rod on Amazon or a number of different manufacturer sites and just kind of drill out a channel that you can slide your wires in, and that's exactly how they do it in the show. But I decided to kind of make it a, you know, 10th, 11th, combination so I decided to paint this tube with a pearlescent green so it would kind of look like the inside of the Matt Smith screwdriver. <clears throat> now you can use this setup any combination of ways to kind of produce anything you want like, a, like I said if you can find a clear tube it would be easy to use the clear tube as opposed to the half inch tube and you've got more of a true-to-life and David Tennant replica. And then again, everything just kind of squeezes together, slides in, and boom. There's your fully custom sonic screwdriver. I hope this was helpful.